case you missed it, Father's Day is right around the corner. The influence of a father has on his children can last a lifetime. And it's a relationship that young Tom Davis longed for as a child until he got it. My earliest memories as a little boy was that my father was never around. I, I knew I had a dad, but I never saw him. I never talked to him. I had absolutely no recollection of him. My mother remarried when I was about six years old. I remember I was excited because I was so longing for a father in my life. Tom Davis's father deserted the family when Tom was only a toddler. He hoped his new stepfather would be the kind of daddy he always wanted. Well, it wasn't, wasn't long after they were married that we started to realize that, you know, this was going to be a difficult marriage. Uh, my stepfather was an alcoholic. Now my whole idea of a father switched from someone who was never around and was absent, completely absent in my life, to this violent, alcoholic person that you had to walk on pins and needles and anything you might do would set him off. Tom found a source of stability in his grandparents. They often talked to him about God and took him to church. I remember this one service, we were in a Baptist church and they were talking to me and said, you know what, Tommy, you know, you have a father in heaven who really loves you. And I have to be honest that the whole concept of a father in heaven for me was really difficult. And then one service, uh, it, was, it was just, you know, a, a different time. And for me, it was the first time that God's father heart was revealed to me as a little boy, that he was real, that he did love me and he wanted, I knew he wanted to be different. Tom's home life was anything but nurturing of his new faith. I hated my life and I would cry. I mean, night after night going, why God, if you love me so much, am I in this kind of situation? Why am I gonna have to wake up again and face another day of not knowing if I'm gonna get beat up, my mother's gonna get beat up, what's gonna happen? There, there were a couple things that were starting to happen. One was self-hatred that I started to think, well, maybe God just doesn't love me. I mean. Maybe, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe it's me. And that started a pattern in my life of, okay, I don't like who I am, and, and I feel like God isn't as close and present in my life as I'd like Him to be. So I can use alcohol and then later drugs as a way to cover that up and to become somebody that I'm not. By his teens, Tom was drinking and using drugs. Eventually, Tom left home and found a way to support his lifestyle. And so that started with working at this company that was a little shady, but I was making a ton of money at 17 years old. And we started doing things we should have never done, like uh, counterfeiting uh, traveler's checks and assuming identities and being somebody we weren't. And we had, we could create money out of thin air. I was drinking so much I didn't remember what happened the night before. My drug use was, was getting terrible. I had gotten so despondent so depressed, so discouraged from my lifestyle. And I was so miserable that I decided I was gonna commit suicide. And so a friend of mine and I decided we were gonna end it all, we were gonna make this easy, and we decided to lock ourselves, we took a, bo a box of sleeping pills, locked ourselves in a garage with a, with a car that was, that was started. I felt my, my body shutting down. I felt all of the oxygen, all the life coming out of me. At the last second, God woke me up in that car in that locked garage and said, this, this isn't your time. You gotta get out of here now. And literally, I don't even know how I made it out. I crawled out of that garage and, and had the most bizarre experience. When I, hit, when I hit that door, I saw my, my life come back into my body. And, and I didn't have any choice at that point but to turn to God. Tom and his friend both survived. I was at a crossroads, I mean a serious crossroads. That's when God came into my life and said, you know what? I'm gonna give you another chance, but you've got to seek me with your whole heart. When you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. I wanted to know what God's father heart was like. I wanted to know, I wanted to know what it was like to have intimacy with God, for him to, to love me and for there to be a relationship. And I left all of that in my life that I was doing and literally said, you know what, God, I'm gonna know you. I'm gonna know the, the depth of these words that you've written in the Bible. And I ended up literally packing up cold turkey, disappeared, didn't tell anybody where I was going, and went to Bible school. But through the relationships that I had at that Bible school, God would just minister to me and heal those areas in my heart that I couldn't heal on my own, that nobody else could, could touch. Even after God radically turned his life around, his past and the FBI caught up with him. I thought I had left all of this stuff 
and, and that it was not going to you know, affect me and I wasn't going to have to deal with it anymore. But I ended up going down to, to my attorney's office and sat down with two FBI officers. They showed me the fake IDs that they had found. They had told me the stories about how they had been following me, the things that they knew that I had done. And I sat there in front of them, dumbfounded. And I told those FBI officers everything I had done. I told them things they had no idea that, that, that I had done. They looked at me and they said, you know what, Tom? We've never seen anybody be as honest as you are about this. They couldn't believe, I mean, I just incriminated myself. I just sentenced myself to 60, 70 years in a federal penitentiary. And they said, why don't you go back to Bible school and we'll call you and let you know what we're gonna do. Soon the FBI called to tell Tom they were reducing the charges to one federal offense. A judge gave Tom the lightest sentence possible, one year in federal prison. But when that gavel came down, I ended up having to go and, and serve my time uh, for what I had done. Uh, and then I got out and I had this, you know, black box on my, on my ankle. And uh, after that was over, I, I was free. My, my, I was, everything else in my past was gone and now I could start over again. When he was released, Tom became a youth pastor and an author. Today he's married with seven children and runs an international adoption ministry. I wanted fatherless kids or kids who come from broken homes to know that God is a father, that he loves them and that he'll guide them and he'll lead them throughout the rest of their life just like he had done with me. The same way he redeemed me. You know, when I was you know, dark with my sin and the junk that was in my life, I had no hope, I had none. And God just went back and he healed those places. And he, sh and he, he said, listen, I can, you can trust me. I'll be your father, even though you've never had a father. I'll teach you what it's like. God has proven himself as my father. He's reaffirmed who he is in my life. He's taught me the things that I needed to learn uh, when I needed to learn it from a father. He's been faithful. I mean, it's always been there every single time in my life.